Good day everyone, especially to our instructor, Mr. Ivan J.D. Ortega. I am Ravelyn B. Arnopia from BSHM1A, the leader of Group 3, and I would like to greet you all a pleasant day. We will be showing our recorded presentation in Purposive Communication entitled Communication for Employment together with my group mates, Ms. Anne Carlene Baltazar, Mr. Renzel Banayo, Mr. John Paul Concebido, Ms. Joy Camille de Vanadera, Ms. Angel Doria, Mr. John Russell Duroca, Ms. Rosalyn Australia, Mr. George Gapaz, Ms. Zarina Nicole Agrindulo, and Ms. Arabella Moran. Specifically, this lesson would help you manifest understanding on how to obtain, provide, and disseminate information appropriately and effectively. It would also help you develop vital communication skills, especially when you enter the workplace. Lastly, it would help you formulate and analyze various arguments logically. Now, if you're wondering what communication for employment really is, let us proceed to the following video. Communication for Employment Definition Communication is the act of giving, receiving, and sharing information. In other words, talking, or writing, and listening, or reading. Good communicators listen carefully and speak or write clearly and respect different opinions. Strong communication skills can help kids interact both face-to-face -face and the online world. Texting, chatting, and posting responsibly depends on understanding how words and image affect others. E-communication is often defined as the sharing information and ideas between the management of an organization and employees and vice versa. It is essential for an organization's success that there are many different channels available to communicate with your employees as well as your customers. Social media definitely has certainly increased the scope of communication. At the end of social media, the number of options for communication has increased. You can share information among your employees almost instantaneously. As the speed of communication increases, the challenges for communicating effectively also change. Email, face-to-face -face communications, live chat, there are so many different channels for effective employee communications, but also what's work for one organization may not work for the others. You need to identify what mood of communication works perfectly within your organizations. Employee communication has changed over the years. In the past decade, almost part of the communication was face-to-face. -face. Now we have the plethora of different channels of communications. Deep communication is where your employees are well informed and all the functions run smoothly in the organizations. Organization needs to create world class. In changing communications program, they should leverage feedback received from the human resources department to improve their internal channels. So now let's proceed on why communication in the workplace is important. Communication ensures the operation of the workplace and it is the quality of communication that can significantly affect the results of work. Improving communication can be done by choosing the use of signs or symbols common to the participants of the communication process, which is not always just the language, but also pictures, gestures, etc., resulting from the company's common culture and experience. Gestures or pictures can be used to better explain the message to the employee. Successful communication is well thought out and purposefully presented because quality communication is the basis for the success of work. Effective communication in the workplace is an integral part of company success. Quality communication in the workplace can eliminate unnecessary problems and promote better performance. The ability to communicate effectively in the workplace can increase overall productivity and create a strong team. If employees consult with each other and consider the views of others, they will be interested in cooperating more and finding the best solution together. 
By creating good communication, managers can better understand the talents and skills of their employees, then give clear instructions to the people who are best suited to the task, thus increasing of the overall effectiveness of each particular project. What is a resume? A resume is a form of document that a job applicant creates to itemize their qualifications for a position. A resume is usually accompanied by a customized cover letter in which the applicant expresses some interest in a specific job or company and draws attention to the most relevant specifics on a resume. A resume is always required for an applicant to office job. They are the first step taken by a corporate recruiters and hiring managers to identify who might be invited them to interview for a position. There are many formats of resumes with many variations of particular professions such as investment banking and the fashion trade. Whatever the format, most resumes must include a brief summary of his skills and experience, followed by a bullet list of previous jobs in reverse chronological order and a list of degrees earned. A final section might be added to highlight specific skills, such as fluency in a foreign language, knowledge of computer languages, personally useful hobbies, personal affiliation, and any honor achieved. What are the parts of a resume? Contact information. Your contact information belongs at the top of your resume in your resume header and should help hiring managers quickly understand who you are and how to reach you. Your contact information includes your first and last name, email, phone number, mailing address. Additionally, if you're a graphic designer, writer, or other professional creative, consider including a link to your portfolio or personal website in this part of your resume. Resume Introduction Your resume introduction is your elevator pitch. This resume component is a short section at the top of your resume that summarizes your key qualifications and tells the hiring manager how your goals align with theirs. There are four types of resume introduction. 1. Resume Summary 2. Resume Objective 3. Resume Profile 4. Summary of Qualifications Experience Work experience is one of the most essential parts of a resume and typically makes up the bulk of its content. Skills The skills section of your resume is an important part of your application regardless of how much experience you have. Education. The level of detail added to your resume education section can vary based on how much work experience you have and your level of education. We ultimately, any strong education section includes your school name, school location, degree, graduation year. This topic is about how to write a good resume. The first step in producing a resume is to select a resume format. A hybrid resume format which emphasizes abilities and work experience equally is the ideal option for most job seekers. In other circumstances, though a chronological or functional resume may be preferable, after that, fill in your name and contact details. The third step is to create a standout resume headline. A resume headline is a one-line description of your qualifications. A well-written headline can pique a recruiter's interest and entice them to dig deeper into your qualifications. Fourth, include a professional resume summary statement, which is a brief paragraph or section of bullet points at the top of your resume that showcases your professional talents and expertise. Give specifics about your professional experience in the fifth step. It is the most crucial section of your CV. Employers scrutinize this section to see if your job history and past accomplishments qualify you as a strong candidate. Next, make a list of applicable talents and keywords. If an employer is scheming a resume or looking through an application tracking system, resume keywords are essential terms of interest that they seek for APAs. Your CV will be better optimized if it contains more role-specific keywords, often hard skills. Add your schooling, qualifications, and any other relevant information in the seventh step. Education, medals, and honors, volunteer experience, and certificates are all included in this area. 
remember that your resume should always highlight your skills for that specific position. So anything in your background that doesn't promote the image of you as a suitable fit for the role shouldn't be included. 8. Customize your resume and make it compatible with application tracking systems. Finally, make sure your grammar and formatting are in order. Writing a resume is a distinct style. Remembering which tense to use or when and why to eliminate pronouns can be difficult. You should also think about the fonts you use. You can now have a decent resume after completing all of these steps. Moving on, what is an application letter? A letter of application, also known as a cover letter, is a document sent with your resume to provide additional information on your skills and experience. A letter of application typically provides detailed information on why you are qualified for the job you are applying for. Effective application letters explain the reasons for your interest in the specific organization and identify your most relevant skills or experiences. Your application letter should let the employer know what position you are applying for, why the employer should select you for an interview, and how you will follow up. When writing an application letter, you should include first paragraph, why are you writing? Mention the job you are applying for and where you found the listing. In the middle paragraph, what you have to offer the employer. Mention why your skills and experience are a good fit for the job. And in the last paragraph, say thank you to the hiring manager for considering you and note how you will follow up. Parts of Application Letter Heading contains the sender's address as well as the date of the letter was written. Example, 614 Poblacion Tres, Arela Subdivision, Nagredan, Laguna, December 26, 2021. Inside address contains the name of the employer, his or her position, the company's name, and the company's or organization address. Example, Miss Anna Vergara, General Manager, Resort Worlds Manila, Newport Build, Pasay, 1309 Metro Manila. Salutation, a greeting to the employer that appears just before the letter's main content. Example, Dear Miss Vergara, Body of the letter. You can express all of the messages you want your reader to understand in this section. Example, a friend of mine has informed me of an opening in your company for an assistant manager. I should like to be considered for this position. I am recent graduate at Pamantasan ng Sol ng San Pablo. The courses and training I obtained from this institution stress up-to-date procedures, principles, and theories that will enable me to have expertise in this job I am applying for. For almost three years, I have worked in Baby Park Hotel Manila. My experience in this hotel gave me a lot of knowledge about the techniques and terminology particular to this job. I also work as a part-time in Jollibee San Pablo. My past experiences will help me adjust to your program in a short span of training period. And close is my resume to give you a more detailed information about my qualifications. May I have a personal interview? You can reach me through this telephone number 501-2034. Complimentary close serves to finish the message in the same way as saying goodbye ends a conversation. Example, very truly yours. Signature contains the name and signature of the writer. Example, signature, overprinted name. 
how to write an application letter. Application letter is a standalone document to submit a potential employer to express his interest in an open position. This document explains you are as a professional and individual. The purpose of making this letter is an application to fit a job for accordance with the vacancy offer. In other words, this letter can speak to the information of personal skills. And also the experiences for consideration by recruiters to follow up on the application selection process. Follow these steps to make sure you include information about yourself and your professional experience that will appeal to a hiring manager. Review information about the company and position. Use a professional format. Create the heading. Address the letter to the hiring manager. Open the letter by describing your interest. Outline your experience and qualification. Include aspects of your personality. Express appreciation. Close the letter. What is a job interview? A job interview is an interview consisting of a conversation between a job applicant and a representative of an employer which is conducted to access whether the applicant should be hired. Interviews are one of the most popularly used devices for employee selection. Interviewing is an important step in the employee selection process. If done effectively, the interview enables the employer to determine if an applicant's skills, experience, and personality meet the job's requirements. What are the common job interview questions? For my first questions, tell me a little about yourself. The goal of an interview is to determine whether the candidate will be outstanding in the job, and that means evaluating the skills and attitude required for the job. Does she need to be an empathetic leader? As about that. Does she need to take your company public? The candidate talk about why do you took certain jobs. Explain. Why you left? Explain. Why you choose a certain school? Share why you decided to go to grad school. Discuss why you took a year off the backpack to Europe and what you got out of the experience. Next questions. Out of all the candidates, why should we hire you? Since a candidate cannot compare himself with people, he doesn't know all he can do is describe his incredible passion and desire and commitment and will basically beg for the job. Rarely do candidates come to the end of an interview feelings they've done their best. Maybe the conversation went in unexpected directions. Maybe the interviewer focused on one aspect of their skills and totally ignore other key attributes. Or maybe candidates start the interview nervous and hesitant and now wish they could go back and better. Describe their qualification and experience. Question number three, why do you want this job? Now go deeper. Don't just talk about the company. Would be great to work for. Talk about for the position is a perfect fit for what you hope accomplish both short term and long term. And if you don't know why the position is a perfect fit, look somewhere else. Life is too short. And for the question number four, what are your biggest weakness? Every candidate knows how to answer this question. Pick a theoretical weakness and magically transform that flow into a strength in disguise. A better approach is to choose an actual weakness. But when you're working to improve, share what you're doing to overcome that weakness. No one is perfect, but showing you're willing to honestly self-assess and then seek ways to improve come pretty darn close. And for the last questions, what are your biggest strengths? I'm not sure why interviewers ask this question. Your resume and experience should make your strengths readily apparent if your ask provide a sharp point answer. Be clear and precise if you're a great problem solver. Don't just say that. Provide a few examples pertinent to the opening that prove you are a great problem solver. If you're an emotionally intelligent leader, don't just say that. Provide a few examples that prove you know how to answer the unasked question. Tips on how to answer job interviews successfully. And the first one is practice good nonverbal communication. It is about demonstrating confidence, standing straight, making eye contact, and connecting with a firm handshake. That first nonverbal impression can be a great beginning or a quick ending to your interview. The second one is dress for the job company. It 
today's casual dress code do not give you permission to dress as they do when you interview. It is important to know what to wear to an interview and to be well groomed. Whether you wear a suit, something less formal depends on the company culture and the position you are seeking. If possible, call to find about the company dress code before the interview. The third one is listen. One of the most crucial interview tips is to listen. From the very beginning of the interview, your interviewer is giving you information, either directly or indirectly. If you are not hearing it, you are missing a major opportunity. Good communication skills include listening and letting the person know you heard what was said. Observe your interviewer and watch the style and pace. The fourth one is, don't talk too much. Telling the interviewer more than the needs to know could be a fatal mistake. When you have a prepared ahead of time, you may rumble when answering interview questions. Sometimes, taking yourself right out of the job. Prefer for the interview by reading through the job posting, matching your skills with the position's requirements, and relating only the informations. And for the fifth one, don't be too familiar. The interview is a professional meeting to talk business. This is not about making a new friend. Your level of familiarity should mimic the interviewer's demeanor. It is important to bring energy and enthusiasm to the interview and to ask questions. But do not overstep your place as a candidate looking for a job. And the sixth one, use the appropriate language. It is given that you should use professional language during the interview. Be aware of any inappropriate slang words or references to age, race, religion, politics, or sexual orientation. These topics could send you out of the door very quickly. And the seventh one is, don't be cocky. Attitude plays as a key role in your interview success. There is a fine balance between confidence, professionalism, and modesty. Even if you are putting up performance to demonstrate your ability, overconfidence is a bad, if not worse, as being too reserved. All the interview tips in the world won't save you if you come off as unpleasant to work with. And for the number eight, take care to answer the questions. When interviewers ask for an example of a time when you did something, they are asking behavior interview questions, which designed to elicit an example of your past behavior. If you fail to relate the specific example, you are not only don't answer the question, but you also miss an opportunity to prove your ability and talk about your skills. And the number nine is ask question. When asked if they have any questions, most candidates answer no, and it is a wrong answer. Part of knowing how to interview is being ready to ask questions that demonstrate an interest in what goes on in the company. Asking questions also gives you an opportunity to find out if this is the right place for you. The best questions come from the listening to what you've asked during the interview and asking for additional information. And for the last one, don't appear desperate. When you interview with the please, please hire me approach, you appear desperate and less confident. Reflect the choices during the interview. Cool, calm, and confident. So, that's all for today. Thank you for listening in our visual presentation entitled, Communication for Employment. And remember, Tony Robbins quoted that, To effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. And that would be all. Thank you again. And have a nice day!
time.